Hello everyone and welcome back to Final Fantasy 13. as you join us deep in the heart of the vestige in pursuit of the Pulse Fousey. Wow, that was close. Uh, and hope in a bit of an unfortunate situation here. Where is the... Oops. Well then... I wanted to thank everyone for the support on the previous episode. Um, every view is incredibly appreciated. Guess it's just us. Especially as this series what goes on. What do you expect? Uh. Even soldiers know not to go near the foul sea. You become a pulse, Lissy, and you're finished. What do you mean, finished? Haven't you heard, Miss... Vanille. Huh? My name. And yours? Hope. <sighs> Thank you. <sighs> what were we thinking? Well, since we're here, let's look around. Oh, to have Vanille's positive outlook on life. Uh, you should notice that the video quality is much improved in this one. I think I've sorted out all the encoding issues for OBS. So yes, we are now getting closer to finally having some answers as to what the Pulse Fail C is and what it represents. Hey, Vanille, where are you? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's uh. So we are uh, still on post-commentary for this episode. We'll be moving to live commentary for the next episode. And yeah, um, Hope just pulls that out of wherever no, he happened to have it. <laughs> now, I don't... I get that the Neil's weapon is meant to be like a whip, obviously a sub-switcher, but it is the most bizarre animation when she's attacking things. The way that the sort of things float about is... Very weird looking. Very weird. Like, it, it's, it looks like she's meant to be whipping them, but the, the balls and the wires Better kind of just close. seem to just sort of float around everywhere. I don't know. Now, I like this area. I like the layout of it. It's one of the first spots now that we start to move away from the more sure vertical the hor right um, corridors. I mean, it's still pretty linear, but now there's a few little offshoot paths with some items and things like that. So we're starting to open up a little bit and get some different enemy types as well. Uh, you'll notice there I'm switching back to controller prompts because I actually remembered to charge my controller before this part. Plus, I don't know, Vanille's fun. I like playing as Vanille. You don't get as much reason to later in the game because she's usually better in a support role, so I enjoyed these early chapters where you actually get more of a chance to play as her. Now, one thing about this area, and something that I basically neglect all the way almost to the end of this episode, is that you can actually avoid a huge amount of these enemies. Um, a lot of them are guarding optional paths and optional items, and I, I don't know, I was sort of in the mind frame of exploring and finding everything, so I end up, I end up basically fighting every enemy in this area. Uh, but you really don't have to. You see these ones just over here, they're just guarding a... Um, <laughs> <laughs> trying to go for the preemptive strike there, didn't work. Um, they're just guarding some items. None of them are super important. There's some basic accessories and things like that. But... I will say, Vanille's actually a bit of a powerhouse this early. That first weapon she gets actually does a decent amount of damage. It's just a shame that the animation's so slow and weird. Doesn't feel particularly good to play as her, or Hope, really, because he's got the... Um, the boomerang, which again, he just sort of froze and it comes back. It's not really got that nice visceral feeling like the sword characters do or Snow's punching. And then again, this is just a pointless fight. I have no idea why I was fighting these guys. I think in my mind, I had an idea that it was generating XP or something. I don't know. I'm trying to pad the episode time out, I guess. Um, once we get out of the fight, pay particular attention to the music in the background. There's a really nice theme in this area. One of the more sort of ambient, 
kind of electronic ones that are laced throughout the soundtrack that are really nice. interesting theme um, that it feels kind of safe and homely but at the same time sort of very weird and um, very different from the music in the previous area sort of highlights how strange and otherworldly the vestige is yeah it prompts you that they're easy to sneak up on but I, I mean they are that, that's just that, that one at the hour and I'm staring right at you but yes like I said the preemptive strikes in this game the system's very janky really doesn't ever work the way you expect it to. Always just feels like a fluke if you ever manage to pull one off. I do like Vanille's little animation when she finishes the fight, the way she sort of folds her weapon up. Yeah, see, just a basic health boosting accessory. Good to keep hope alive, if nothing else. But I very easily could have avoided half of this area. Even this bit where they run in, it's very easy to just sneak around them. So when you come back and play this part, if you're starting it again, you can just sneak past all of this. Like, I really don't know what I had in my head about having to fight every single one of these ones. Not even the most interesting fights. You can see here the footage looks much better. This game looks fantastic. At 60 frames per second, I think my video card can finally handle it. I was really worried that trying to film it at the same time would tank the frame rate, but it handles it really well. This is running on PC uh, with the Final Fantasy 13 Fix mod. Um, you used to have to run it through Gino Sato, uh, which had its own inherent problems with it, but thankfully the Fix mod seems to work really well. Um, you can basically unhook the frame rate up to anything. Um, the animations are tied to the frame rate, though. You might notice their lips look a little really weird in some shots. That's just because it's running at 60 instead of 30, but... Hmm. Pulse Falsy and Lissy are bad news. That's why Cocoon kicked them out. Live too close to the Falsy, one-way ticket to Pulse. That's the purge in a nutshell. If they catch us here, they'll purge us too, and What's then... What's your problem? What's my... Pulse is hell on Earth. Hmm. Vanille very succinctly summing up the plot up to this point here. And we'll again with the okay. hugs. Calm down. <laughs> You'll be okay. Calm down. Get off me. <laughs> oh, I feel your pain, Vanille. Sarah! Tap him on the back. There, there. Can you hear me? Where are you? <sighs> and now the first of two incredibly pointless sections with snow in here. Honestly, these could have been cutscenes. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what they're thinking of this one. It looks like it's going to be something interesting, don't but worry, yeah, Sarah. it's not. Your hero is on his way. I don't really know where the implication is that Snow came from. Like when we see Lightning and Stars later, it shows where they came from. Well, when we see Vanille, obviously, we see how they got in there. I mean, we know that he went up there in the bike, but it's not like the bike's behind him here or anything where he landed. He just, like, jumped through the roof, or... And it's implied that this whole area is locked off as well, as you'll see in a second when we actually press the button that we're meant to. Like, the bike's not anywhere here. He didn't, didn't land here. See? No bike there. I mean, he didn't come in there be very pedantic but it, it's weird that it shows very clearly how everyone else got there that snow is just sort of like in the magic room that controls all the buttons and everything oh well now was i smart and dodge the enemies here because you can just walk straight past them nope actually no i don't think you can because that one stared right in front of the button never mind I lied. Wrapped up and ready. Yeah, Solo Snow is the most boring fights. Now this feels like a traditional JRPG. <laughs> only in control of one character, only one attack option. Press X to win. This feels like play for the start of Dragon Quest XI. Here's our fun combat system. All you can do is press attack. With that one. 
I don't know why I was attack cancelling. Probably would have been quicker. I was probably just trying to have a second nut in the press to uh, make it more interesting. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the, the start of this game has some issues. There are some weird pacing quirks in some spots, but I mean, just hold on. Honestly, what what JRPG doesn't? At least it looks cool. Yeah, see, here we go. So this is the part that it's like, oh, look at this, it's all shifting. Looks like it's going to be this really interesting level. And then we just... We just go. That's it. No, you don't get to explore any of that at all. None of that. Just did the big whiz-bang, zoom around. No. We're just going to move on to the other characters now. Yeah. Honestly, you could have literally just had this cutscene and none of the gameplay part. You know, you didn't have to have the gameplay of no walking forward five steps. Still won't budge. Sars being incredibly useful as always. Uh, I think the door is winning. <laughs> Why didn't I listen? <laughs> uh, beg your pardon. This is a great scene. I love this scene. It was me. This is my fault. Beg your pardon. Cover your ears. Huh? Oh, oh last charge? Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. All right, hold, hold, hold. All right, go for it. Make it happen. I'm so sorry. Please let me in. Please. Another really great character moment with Lightning there. She has so many good character moments. Can't believe people poke fun at her. Sounds with the actual good quality comic relief. Ah, yes, the shroud system. Literally always forget this exists. It's, it's like a way of buffing yourself before battles. But you, you pick up so few of them. You can buy them at stores, but honestly, like outside of the Deceptor Soul kind of being able to be used for preemptive strikes on stronger enemies and... I don't know. I might end up remembering to use them in the gameplay. We'll see. Some of them are useful in that they give you pretty good buffs before boss fights and things like that, but I, I never found them super useful. They don't last very long either. Again, should have just run straight past them. At least we could show off the preemptive strike mechanic now. So basically what happens is you get to attack them, you get to go first, and you get to boost their stagger meter to almost full. But it does suck that unless you can hit all of them to stagger them, that it kind of just wastes the stagger meter. It has its benefits if you pull it off, but it's, it's really not worth the hassle. Really doesn't make that much difference to the battle or anything. Run past them. <laughs> yes, apologies. You are going to see a lot of the same battle over and over here. But things are about to shake up in a minute. to the blitz there, should have gone to attack. Nah, that's a good one. I love hitting him with a stagger like that. That looks great. <laughs> I think that was the point I remembered when Sars said that. Not to bother. Oh no, I still went for the item. I have a feeling that's literally a couple of potions too. But these guys don't take very long to fight. They've got like no health. I think one blitz kills them. Yeah. Should have attacked there. That was kind of pointless. Sars will finish that off. Yeah, the scan droids are fine. You can hit them in one. Again, yeah, potions. 
Oh no, Phoenix South. And again, not super important. Obviously, this is an unavoidable fight. Just in me of a dot again. Now, like a lot of Final Fantasies, there's a lot of Norse mythology in this, in the naming of the summons and things like that. But they also have a lot of Greek and Roman stuff in this. The Myrmidons, the Hoplites, that sort of stuff. A lot of the enemies, especially the robots, are all named after Greek and Roman infantry. I thought that was pretty interesting. And they sort of embody a lot of what those um, infantry represent as well. It was cool for me because I grew up playing um, a lot of the Age of Empire games, so I was uh, quite familiar with that terminology because of that, and I really enjoyed history when I was younger, so I did appreciate this being my first Final Fantasy game. I did think that a lot of that mythology stuff was cool. It was less cool when I realised that basically every JRPG in existence pretty much uses the same mythology, but um, at the time I was very impressed. I was like, I know those words! The um, Leonardo DiCaprio pointing beam. <laughs> oh, fight with two different enemy types. There, yeah, see, they're one blitz to take those ones out. How was your Christmas? <laughs> so, I'm running out of things to talk about. <laughs> Probably should have cut these fights out. I don't know. What's happening where you are? Leave some comments. I'd love to have something to chat about. Especially when we get to the live commentary. I'll basically do an episode after each. Ah, Gladius. See, early on it's really good to have these high strength weapons. Usually you want to go more balanced, especially with lightning. But uh, early on at least when we don't have any magic, it's useful to have those high strength weapons. It's interesting the sort of the blaze fire saber is kind of iconic to her, and then you just replace it with the first weapon you get. I don't think there's ever a reason, really, to go back to the Blaze Fire, even if you upgrade it. Most of the weapons are much better than that one. It looks cool. But I mean, the Gladius looks pretty cool, too. Look at that like big axe-like thing on the end of it. You don't get to see the potential of the gun sword this early. She doesn't have enough attacks. Later on, when you get the full five attack chain, she actually jumps around and shoots and stuff like that a lot more. And when she gets her magic attacks too, some of them have like gunfire and things like that. Mostly she just uses it as a sword here. You see some of the later cutscenes she uses the gun mode too. Oh, close to the knockout on Sarah there. That was close. I owe you. Lucky you didn't use a big attack. I mean, getting knocked out this early in the game doesn't really mean anything, but still. If those things are still around, might be some soldiers trapped in here too. Except they'd probably be Lassie by now. Huh? Not even human anymore. Just post Lassie. Enemies of Cocoon. Can't show them any mercy. It's interesting, you know, whether Sars is saying that as much to himself as he is to Lightning. There's the next one. Especially when we learn more about him. And another segment of Snow walking down a hallway to press a button. Bring it Riveting on. gameplay. I have no idea why they put this in here. It's so pointless. Honestly, most of Snow's sections are pointless gameplay-wise. This? this is literally the last time you play as him, and it's just to walk forward three steps, punch two guys, and then press a button. And that's fine. Only takes a few seconds. And here we go. Press the button. All over. There you go. Down comes the elevator. All right. Step onto elevator and scene. Huh. Hang on, baby. Your hero's on the way. 
Warte durch. <lacht> yeah. Snow. Hang on, baby. Your hero's on the way. He is here. Calling himself a hero. He's coming our way. Well, what should I do? Tell him what you need to. But nothing I say will change what happened. We could just run away. <laughs> if you wanted to run away, you probably should have done that before you got stuck in the vestige. Hey, preemptive strike. <laughs> Strange animation. I don't know if that's the frame rate making that look even weirder. I don't ever remember it looking that weird. It could be a um, could be the higher frame rate stuff and that up there. Honestly, it's a strange animation. Look how shiny everything is. See, here we go. Because I haven't got an area of effect attack trouble here is that I'm not going to pull off a stagger here. So they're entirely pointless getting a preemptive strike on these guys. Killed them all before we staggered them anyway. Now, it does help for some of the bigger enemies if you can get a preemptive strike on some of the bigger ones and stagger them early. It can make a difference, but yeah. Sadly, a pretty underbaked mechanic. Oh, I was actually trying to sneak past them then. That's a uh, scripted fight, looks like, because they triggered even with my... Oh, no, that was for to sell, not to set self. There you go. So you see there, this makes a bit of a difference. Haste especially. Haste is so overpowered in this game. Because the, um, the ATB gauge actually charges really quite slowly, especially for the enemies. So haste... I think it's like a four times boost, almost. It's, it's, it's much, much faster. I have a bad feeling I might have skipped a mini cutscene there. I don't, I don't think I did, but um, I accidentally, I was trying to pause the game and I accidentally pressed the wrong button, but I don't think you can skip a cutscene with one button press. I'm pretty sure you do actually have to pause and then skip. So that could just be a weird level transition. Uh, apologies if I did skip a cutscene there. I'm sure it was, sure it was nothing important. I think we're almost up to the last fight with these guys before we get introduced to a new enemy type for this area. I'm tougher than you thought, huh? <laughs> I do like Vanille. I really do. She's a great character. Can we take a little slower? Yeah, here we go. And here comes the new enemies for this area. Big tone shift in the music there. Yeah, 
the Seath are very cool. I'm going to introduce a few variants of them here. Oh, yeah. Not particularly tough to fight yet. Some of the lighter variants are very hard fights. Um, yeah, we'll learn more about them and how they work. We're about to get a bit more information on the Fauci and Lissy and Seath and all of that lot. So if you're a little lost, don't panic. You've got to leave. <laughs> okay, listen. Find some place to hide and keep quiet. Once I find Sarah, we'll all leave together. Uh, You'll be home in time for dinner. <laughs> you. Wait! Ah, uh, Snow, you blind optimism. Who's Sarah? My wife. Future wife, that is. She's a pulse, let's see. No. She's here somewhere, along with that foul sea. I gotta find her and set her free. What's wrong with that you? That all rhymed. Why do you want to help with a sea? They're the enemy. Huh. How can you save a sea? You're not. You're not. That's insane. <laughs> Probably. But I gotta do something, right? I'll be back. Uh, should we wait around for him and hitch a ride? I'd rather go to Pulse! Why is this happening to me? When they found the foul sea the other day, we were just visiting Bodum. Mm. But the army took us, threw us on that train. And because of that guy, Mom is... That's another little hint of what's actually happening. Probably shouldn't leave them alone. No, probably shouldn't. <laughs> and he wants to help with the sea? Hey again. Hey. Let's go with him. You gotta talk to him, Hunk. If you don't take this chance, you regret it forever. Vanille knows too. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Again, desperately trying to hold everyone together there. What's gotten into you, soldier? Thought you came for a fight. My sister. Your sister? She's a Lassie. What? A Pulse Lassie? The Falci has her captive, but I'll find her. Uh, is she still... Hey, what was her focus? When she became a Lassie, what did the Falci order her to do? There's the plot uh, twist. It wasn't blow up cocoon or anything like that, was it? Now, if you haven't worked it out, Sarah, that's Lightning Sister. That's I Hope's. Didn't ask. Um, not Hope Snow. <laughs> <gasps> Snow's fiance is all tied together. I mean, probably able to pick that up by now, anyway. But that's the confirmation. When a person gets cursed by a foul sea, they become a lassie, and they get given a focus, right? How do I put this? If they don't carry it out, Lassie end up as one of those things. What I'm saying is, if your sister's gone that far, I mean, she might still... Poor Sals, how, how he's, I... he's trying. He's really trying. There's no way to turn a Lassie back into a human. Even if she completes her focus, there's no changing her fate. She'll live her life as a foul sea slave. This seems a lot heavier when you know what's going on with Saz's backstory as well. Don't make her suffer. Just say it. Any Lassie, anyone who might ever become a Lassie should be wiped off the face of Cocoon. It's people like you that started the purge in the first place. Ouch. Oh, that's a sea power. Yeah, so this is why I don't get the people who are like, oh, this all this Lassie Falsy stuff's all really confusing. I mean, they they almost over hammer home the explanations of how this stuff works. 
And linguistically, it's pretty cool too. Like it all has the CIE in it. Like you got the Fousey, then you have the Lissy, and then the C. It's all like, it all makes sense, really. If you think of like the C part of it as God, for, you know, like Fousey is like the God. Lissy is like the servants of the God. The C for like the failed servants of the God. I don't know. I never found it that confusing. I don't know. Although I've never been particularly bothered by fantasy nonsense, I guess, when it comes to um, weird terminology or anything like that. I mean, we all read Lord of the Rings growing up. That book needed to have a whole thousand page book explaining what half of the terminology means in that series. I mean, it's just, it goes hand in hand. Imagine how boring if they'd just been called zombies. No. Cursed one, zombies. Like, there's so many more boring words you could have gone with. I love that, you know, the Final Fantasy 13 series just goes, it just goes whole ham on the nonsense. Makes it more fun. Right, they still call them ghouls and vampires and rapes and things like that. The implications are pretty clear. They are undead monsters as a result of a curse. I don't, I don't know. I can't imagine how anyone would have difficulty following the terminology. There's really not that much of it. Plus, it's all in the data log, so, you know, if for any reason you happen to forget it. I'm just pointlessly fighting these guys here. They're, they're so weak, they die in, like, a couple of hits, and they're all super easy to avoid. I think this was the point where I started to realise there was literally no purpose to what I was doing here. No, maybe it's a bit later. No, I'm still... Still pointlessly fighting them. It's literally just one enemy at a time here. Apologies, this is super riveting footage. <laughs> Again, the character designs are fantastic. The designs of the Sea are really cool. The way they're like this rotted... Hey, oh, hey, did I work it out? Oh, looks like I worked it out. That's it, just run past them. Oh, yeah, here's our first bigger variant. These are the, uh, the vampires, I think. Ah, ghast. The, the vampires are the even bigger versions. They remind me a little of the crystal golems from um, Dark Souls. A little. It's like a really corrupted version of it. And um, the design will make sense when you see sort of what the alternative to the seat is. Oh, and there's the first magic use of the game there too. Yeah, so there's a good little hint about how the magic system's going to work. If you haven't already worked out by now what's going to happen to these guys. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but uh, that's a little hint there. <laughs> There's nothing worth buying in the shops yet. <laughs> Honestly, using most of my playthroughs, I just find myself buying upgrade equipment. Um, upgrade, upgrade materials. That's the way I'm looking for materials. Um, you get enough from the fights and chests and things that you don't really ever need to buy potions or anything like that. Oh, almost got around him. So he still counts as a preemptive strike. Yeah, honestly, the Seif are probably the easiest enemies to preemptive strike. I don't know if the implication is that they're blind or just, you know, zombie like, so they don't really have enough intelligence. Yeah, see, skip the whole hallway. There we go. Don't need any of them. Oh, double gas fight. Now, this one's a bit mean without um, anything better to do. These guys are pretty rough. Not as bad as the vampire variant. Some of the later ones of these are really, really dangerous fights. Mainly because of all the magic they can use. It's really dangerous spells. These variants aren't too bad. Yeah. Only really got fire. And they attack pretty slowly. You can see there what I was saying about how advantageous something like haste is. You can see how long it's taken the enemies to load their ATB gauges there. That even on the slowest speed, the basic blue speed that we're on right now, we're still getting much more attacks in than they are. So you combine that with haste and yeah, it's really easy to 
It's basically the strategy for winning this game. I pretty much always play with, as soon as you got someone that can unlock haste, you pretty much permanently keep them in your party. It's just a much better way to play the game. And now here comes a big cutscene. I'll talk when I can, but I'm probably going to have to shush up a lot for this one. Sarah. Hello, Sarah. We'll, uh, see you Time more in the next game. We have to leave before the army. What? That That's seems so friend. well done. That girl's a Lassie. I already told you that. Post Lassie are the enemies of Cocoon. So they should die? Listen, if she fails her focus, you know how that'll end. And killing her is a mercy? You came. Sarah! And then the gang's all here. Sarah. Almost. Still is missing one. My hero? Let's get you out of here. Hands off. I'm taking her home. Sis. I I'm not your sister. You couldn't protect her. It's your fault she can save us. Sarah? She goes. Yes, well, the sea for these more corrupted crystals. The sea who fulfill their focus are transformed into crystal and gain eternal life. So, in this Final Fantasy, the crystals are actually people. Sweet dreams. Sweet dreams? She's not sleeping! Sarah's. She's. She's alive! No. The legend. Remember the legend. The sea who fulfilled their focus turned to crystal and gain eternal life. It's the same with Sarah. Eternal life. She's not dead. Sarah's my bride to be. I promise to be hers forever. I don't care how many years I have to wait. And punch number one. It's over. Open your eyes and face reality. Sarah. Does becoming a Lassie really mean losing everything? That's the first we hear of Vanille talking to Sarah. Again, a lot of that makes some sense later, but now everything's starting to come together. So this is it, what, we're like an hour and a half into the game and we pretty much had the full explanation for how the Foul Sea, the Lassie, Sea, all of that works. So, you know. I feel like I'm harping on a bit on that point, but it's one I hear come up all the time. Oh, all this Foul Sea nonsense, this is so confusing. And, um, I don't know, it seems pretty straightforward to me. These things are cool. They're like rip it apart with the wire stuff. Great shot of the whole area there. The rails and everything. 
And the moment we've all been waiting for. I'll be right back. Hold on. Trench go. I don't think she's going, going anywhere, Snow. Day with the foul sea. Got some things to talk about. What? You're gonna ask it to help her? <laughs> are you out of your mind, kid? That thing wants to chew us up and spit us out. Well, what do you want me to do? Uh, what? That's the first time we hear Lightning's name. I don't know. I don't know the first times. I don't even know if we actually ever hear her proper name in this game or not. And there's our first look at the flying sea. As it glitches out in the background, that's probably the frame rate again, stuffing things up. I do apologise for any errors out of that, it just... I don't know if I'm going to bother locking at 30. If it starts going really weird later, I might lock it at 30. But for now, 60 looks fine. Don't mind the odd little hitch. Hey, snuck around the big guys. Did technically miss a save point there, but it does save before and after this next bit anyway. So, again, kind of pointless. There are way, way too many save points in this game. I mean, all through the game, but especially this early. It's only a model. <laughs> this is one of the less weird Sarah of the Fousey, too. Now. You gave her a focus, and she did it. You got what you want. Now let her go! I remember the first time I watched this, I was like, wait, the Fousey's a... It's a... A... A console? What the heck is that even meant to be? Turn her back. I'll be your Lucy instead. And two very different responses from Snow and Lightning here. Easily sums up their character. Lightning straight in for the attack. Snow giving up and begging on his knees. It's this thing's fault the bird started, and it's people who are dying. Sarah told us to save Cocoon. Welcome to that JRPG. Let's go kill God. Die. That's not even God God. These are just like Jebby God ah. things. Now, here we go. Here's a bit of a better look at it. So the basic idea with the Falci, especially the Cocoon ones, is that they are like sentient robotic enemy um, entities that control things like there's one that controls like all the electric electricity output for cocoon and things like that there's one that's like the sun and basically they all they seem to be i mean they're definitely alive they're not exactly like god gods but um there you can see here this one's like connected to the entire vestige so in a way it's all part of its body and they have powers some description but again they're this sort of weird unknowable Come on now. force you really think you can kill a falsy i'm doing this for sarah that way you guys got a choice Dodge. and there's the first mention of something to do with sars there as well he's not just a tag along uh, the tv I'm things in. are cool <laughs> as long as you don't mind an amateur These things, might as well use them. Thanks. And here's our first actual proper boss fight. 
after the very first time I played this game, this fight absolutely kicked my butt because I did not realize that you could actually attack his arms separately. The idea is here you've got to knock the arms out because they are basically his only ability to attack. Once they get destroyed, he'll go into this sort of staggered mode here. It's not like, not an actual stagger, but you know, he can't do anything except regenerate his arms. And then you are on his crystal. Yeah. Rinse and repeat until he's dead. But yeah, the first few times I played this, I just I, I was basically just rushing through on auto battle. And uh, didn't pay attention to the fact that you could target his hands and just get dying over and over and over and couldn't work out why. I and mean, even on the easy difficulty, if you don't take out those arms, he will absolutely decimate you with magic attacks. So yes, the auto battle is not always the best response to things, because if you just sit there hammering X, it's just going to do all sorts of random things that you don't want it to. It will not prioritise targets, it won't choose the right enemy for you, anything like that. So again, not the most interesting fight, certainly the most interesting fight so far in that we have an actual strategy to this now. That's a good teaching tool for the way that the later boss fights are going to work. And again, balancing the damage and healing and all of that. So here we go, so here he starts with the magic attacks. You see there, one attack basically took half of my health off of two of my characters there, so... If you don't knock these arms out, he'll decimate you really quickly. Yeah, we'll just keep wailing on him. Never noticed how sort of bird-like he is there. All those dangling things in the background. Very cool. Very cool design. Almost got him down. This should be the last cycle now. There we go. And that is the last fight for this part. One very cool cutscene to come, though. But where are we? Again with the green. I mean, I thought I was off making the Lovecraft references before, but there's clearly some influence there. I mean, you'll, you'll see why in a second. And this is very cool. This is weird. I don't know what happens here. If this is like an alternate dimension or they get sucked inside the Falci itself, but... No, I mean, here's the Falci in all its glory. Very cool. And the weird tentacles. <laughs> ah, what a shock. You're all the same. Who would have thought that would have happened? The music reminds me of Mia. I love all the coral stuff. And he dies. First god kill of the game. Not even two hours in. Takes out pretty much the entirety of this area with it. I said the body count at the side of this guy is ridiculous. I mean, that's everyone who's getting purged then. Into the lake. And with that, we create one of the coolest levels in any game. Ugh, look at it. Awesome. More crystals! <laughs> when I couldn't see a future, and I was afraid, when the future was clear, and it hurt to see, I'd just close my eyes and lose myself in happier days. And we'll join Vanille there in the flashbacks in part three. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one.